Hello, welcome to the first session of this short drawing course exploring drawing the human figure. People often give up on drawing the human figure because um, they get bogged down in all the technical aspects of, of drawing uh, to, to make a figure accurate and want to be drawing like Leonardo da Vinci immediately rather than uh, learning a little bit at a time and actually enjoying the process and enjoying playing around drawing the figure. So in this course, the emphasis will be on using simple exercises to make a more accurate figure, but then playing around with it um, using different media. And we're going to be using illustration um, for inspiration. So for example, fashion illustration, loosely, quickly capture a dynamic figure, um, experimenting with colour, the gestural work that you see sometimes in illustration, the much more decorative work, for example, that we have in these pieces of, of work. So trying to uh, have fun whilst we are exploring the figure. This session is going to concentrate on uh, upright figures. So we're going to start with the basics of drawing an upright figure, and then we're going to move on to dancing figures. Before we get started, a quick word about uh, the materials. Um, use whatever art materials you have available. Uh, I'm going to be using a range of, of fairly simple materials, um, such as uh, I'm using watercolour pencils rather than ordinary pencils because they're a little bit softer. I've got some watercolours, in this case Analinky, which are brilliant, uh, very vibrant watercolours, felt tip pens, um, chalk pastels, um, black pen, 2B, a softer pencil, 2B, 4B, um, a Tipex pen. I'm going to use that at some point. I've also got underneath here um, a piece of card to use as a drawing board. And the reason for that is so I've got a soft surface when I'm drawing rather than a hard one up the table. I'm using cartridge paper and I'm also going to use a little bit of coloured sugar paper. Let's say use what you've got um, and you can sort of improvise a little bit. But what I'd recommend is if you're on a budget and you're looking for materials, um, look at the Double H Smiths range um, because they're, they're reasonably good for the price or have a look at Hope Education, which is an excellent site for getting uh, good value art materials. So in this session, our starting point is going to be a structure drawing um, of the figure, which will help us get the proportions of the figure right before we then begin to to play around with it. You can find diagrams like this very easily on the internet or in a lot of drawing books. But if I just talk you through it, um, the principle of this is that we need a unit of measurement to compare the different relative sizes and places of bits of the body. And the convention is to use the head. So from the chin to the top of the head, if we take that as a distance and we repeat it down through the body, we end up with a series of spots where we can find, we can decide this is where the hips lie, for example, the shoulders lying one and a half heads um, down, the nipples about two heads down in this case, the belly button about three heads down, um, the knees about six, and the bottom of the feet eight. Now, in a lot of these sort of diagrams, the, the head will divide into the body eight times. In real life, that isn't necessarily the case. And we'll have a look at that in a moment. But I just want to dwell on this for a little bit longer because people tend to think of this as a stick figure. And it's much more than that. Um, the placing of these lines isn't random. The idea is that these represent, um, in a simplified form, the skeleton which underlies the figure. So we draw a representation of the skeleton first, and then we add flesh onto that skeleton in order to get something that looks realistic. Um, that's perhaps illustrated a little bit when we look from the side. Look at how the spine, although it's a straight line from the front, we see the curvature of it here, the S shape, gentle S shape, coming through the body. Um, also, the fact that the legs just sort of bend back a little way like that when looked at from the side. So it's not just 
um, a stick figure. It is a consideration of where the different points of the skeleton are, so elbows, knees, and so on. It may be worth you sitting and drawing something like that for a little while, um, just to sort of go through that. But, um, but I want to move on to is what happens when the figure uh, moves a little bit. So here we have a, a figure standing very still. And the swatcher picture is a figure which um, is leaning. So when we look at this figure, we can see that as this arm uh, rises up, the shoulder angle shifts. And similarly, as one knee is bent and one is straight, the hips move into a tilted angle and the spine curves. And what we are looking for when we're looking at drawing a figure is looking for those sort of directional lines to suggest what the skeleton is doing underneath. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to find some pictures of standing figures, but preferably in some sort of um, slightly more dynamic pose like this. And we're going to do a drawing from them. Um, you can find these sort of pictures in magazines or you can go to um, certain websites which uh, where you can find lots of uh, pictures. I'm going to pull up a couple of websites now that you could have a look at. So these two websites have some free um, images and some that you have to pay for. Um, but there's plenty of other places where you can look for figures if you can't find anything that you like in this one. But remember, start with something simple. So here's the figure I'm going to work from. Um, so a standing pit figure with a slight tilt. I've got to one side um, my diagram, which I'm referring to, and I'm going to look to see where that central structure is within this picture. Now, I'm going to draw directly on top of the picture. But you could use tracing paper. It's just that the tracing paper makes it less clear for you to see. OK, so I'm using a felt tip pen and here's my head. Can you see that uh, I'm ignoring the bulk of the hair that's just coming off the top? Now, here is my spine. I can see where the center of the chest is, and I can see it coming down and down and down and down and down and down and down with a curve. I can see from shoulder to shoulder a line. I can see the elbow point there and the wrist point here and the hand the elbow point there, right here is the chest, across there, down to the wrist. The hips appear to tilt at an angle like this, and then here's a knee, down to the ankle, and the foot. From this one, knee, down to the ankle. That gives me a framework from which to draw the figure. Here's my sort of hips in the middle. Okay, so that gives me a framework. That's the first step. The second thing is I'm just going to check if those proportions work. So I'm going to take that head. I could use a ruler and I could carefully measure that and just double check. But I'm going to check with my fingers. So that is about one head to there. Another one to there, there, there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heads in total in terms of the size. Um, that's a little bit more normal. Fashion models might be eight. Uh, Something who's very short might be. Um, six and a half or somebody who's got a very big head might be quite uh, different so that is my basis and what i'm now going to do is to translate that onto my piece of paper so to start my drawing i'm using the pencil i'm going to press 
quite hard so you can see it but i'd suggest you start with quite gentle so i've got the oval of the head notice it's tilted so i'm doing an oval that's tilted and that's been by measurement so the spine starts to curve down the way i'm going to go okay how big is that head i could use a ruler i'm going to use my pencil to help me one actually comes about there that's about the chest just here and curving down a bit more take that size again Use my pencil to help me measure about there. And then again, down to the crotch of the trousers. And let's see about the arms. They're about here. Across, that shoulder on get the line of the hips which was about midway between those two points and that's again just tilted a little bit and now I can carry on going down from that point I know that another head's worth that would be about where the knees are another head's worth that's about the ankle and then the feet come underneath so I can start to then build things in so hips down to the knee Just check the angle of that line down to the ankle about there and the foot coming forwards this one out coming back in the knee slightly higher coming back in and across the arm out to the middle of the, the body there and then coming back in that arm tilting like so and this basic structure drawing is what I need to be able to then move on to drawing the body more fully. These images um, illustrate the next stage uh, in developing your drawing from the, the initial structure, which is to flesh out by um, giving volume to the torso and to the limbs. Um, this example here is from How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, and this is from a fashion illustration uh, website. But on both of them, you can see that the simple dynamic lines uh, are, which describe the, the structure, the direction of the skeleton, are then fleshed out um, to create the figure. So sticking with my pencil for now, I'm just going to get on that eye line, uh, sort of mouth, and you sort of see that bit of hair. Um, I can see this volume of chest and the roundness of those sort of shoulders and lines coming up to the neck here. A um, bit of volume on that arm. And notice how I wrap the lines around the skeleton. A bit of volume to that arm here. Just bring that chest around a little bit creases of the fabric so this is coming in front and then I've got a bit of volume on that arm again get a bit of a bulge of the muscle around that arm line of the t-shirt okay hands disappeared in pockets very handy so we don't have to, to worry too much about drawing those then I've got this sort of thigh shape coming forwards and then the trousers coming down, perhaps obscuring a little bit down to there. Again, sort of slightly curved bit for the thigh. It's a definite knee there. And the trousers coming down. The sort of foot disappearing behind. So you can see that that has fleshed that figure out um, quite a bit just going around those things. That's fine, but now I want to have a little bit of fun with it. So I think I'm going to start with uh, my felt tips. 
cut some of these out and start to get a little bit of more interesting colour in there. Let's see. So I've got uh, my watercolors. These are brilliant Ali Link. Is they're terrific because they're so bright. Um, the whole point now is to have some fun with it. See what you can do. So I'm taking ideas from here. I'm just, look at that lovely bright color. Just get that in there. Wash it about a little bit, maybe. I can let that dry and draw back into it. Um, but you get the idea. Um, what I'd encourage you to do is once you've got your basic structure, you know, flesh it out, but then have fun with it. Play around with different types of materials um, and just see what you can achieve. I'm just going to show you some examples now from past students. I just want to come back to the proportions and how they broke down. In this case, the head went into the body um, seven times. What if I started with the head quite small and made the proportions gradually get a bit bigger as I went down the body. So I've got shoulders like this, that sort of chest, there's my hips, my hips are about there, my leg comes down to here, all the way down, and that one comes out and in um, the arms coming down that's the volume of the body and I've got a elongated figure there's nothing stopping me from doing that so I get an exaggeration and here is one that I did earlier in that way so this drawing, I can, can't even fit it onto the table, it's so long. You see this wonderful way that it gets longer and longer and more stretched out as it comes down. I've also worked in quite a lot of dynamic pencil lines to really sort of emphasise that. That's quite a fun little exercise to try out if you want to. Another way of building up the volume of your figure once you've got your initial structure drawing, your skeleton, um, is through a technique called mass drawing, which essentially is a sort of contoury scribble. Um, an artist that's particularly well known for using this technique is Alberto Giacometti. Uh, and it might be worth you having a look at some examples of his drawings, but you can find lots of examples of mass drawing on the, um, on the internet. And I'm going to be looking at uh, a dancing figure. Here's a couple of examples of mass drawings uh, from dancing figures. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be tackling next. 
I found this picture on the internet, there's lots of pictures of dancers. And again, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to try and find my head. The line of the body, which has a really strong curve in it. The angle of the shoulders. And then from the shoulder to the elbow, to the wrist and to the hand. The same on this side. The angle of the hips. I know that some of this is hidden, but you can sort of imagine where it, it goes. And down to the knee and away, disappearing. Down to the knee there, down to the ankle and the foot. So that is my basic structure drawing. I might just want to look at the measurements. And because the head is tilted, it appears um, much smaller, but I'm using that as a unit. So it will go into the body uh, quite a few more times. So that goes one, two, three, and a bit. And then it keeps going. If I tell it. So it goes into the body a lot more times because it appears smaller from the tilt. So I translate that over into a drawing here. And I'm drawing fairly small so that um, it fits in the, in the screen. But there's no reason for you to stick with that. So the head is much rounder uh, in this particular profile. And it sort of comes curves, curving, quite dynamic. Have I got it about right? That's one head. Two heads should be a little bit steeper. Three heads out there. And then the hips. The shoulders were just above that line there. Terrific, strong volume of that body there. Let's sort of fill that in a little bit. And then from the leg. Now I could just do lots of measurements, uh, but I can see it's roughly that sort of size. And to be honest with you, I don't mind if I exaggerate it just a little bit. Put my foot down there. That arm flinging out almost horizontally. And up into the hand. This one going back. Like so up and out. So there is my basic structure drawing on which I can work. Now I could just work directly on this one, um, fleshing it out uh, and so on. And that's what I've done here, where I've actually uh, fleshed it out a little bit with a charcoal pencil, and then I've used a little bit of, of um, black sort of um, watercolor paint to add in tones and so on. So fleshing out all the skirt and all of that sort of thing. Um, the basic dynamics is all underneath there. But what I want to do is show you doing this as a mass drawing. So the volume suggested by those scribbles and, and this pen is, is a nice cheap one that runs with water. So I'm going to add uh, just a little bit of water to give that a bit more volume in places. Just suggesting those shadows here and there. So that volume, that uh, mass drawing, allows me to just 
capture the volume in a different way. The mass drawing technique lends itself in particular to working in pastels, which is what I'm going to do now. So the main body of this dancer, we've got that dress coming down, flowing. You can see that I'm building really quite big volumes rather than concentrating on the outline. I want the limbs to stand out, so I'm going to actually use a, a greeny colour. Why not? Again, just sort of give those volume. And this green to the head and some darker colour for the hair coming around and down. That simple, just blow that a little bit, that simple first stage I'm now going to fix and then I'm going to work back into it, making it more subtle uh, and so on. So I'm going to fix it with some hairspray and then work back into it. So I'm going to build out a bit more, really get that sort of volume. The chest is second layer of pastel will go on much, much um, stronger so I can be much more kind of dynamic with my marks So here's one that I worked a little bit more on, just trying to get that feeling of flowness, but keeping it quite simple. Now, we're concentrating on the clothes figure, but you could, if you wanted to, apply the, all these rules uh, and ways of working to, um, to the uh, naked figure. Here's an example from um, a life drawing class, and you can see the um, scribbly mass drawing being used to describe the contours of the body. Next session, we'll be looking at how treating the figure as a series of simplified forms can help you tackle um, more difficult poses where you have got foreshortening like this one.